Welcome to this field of maize near Attleborough in, in Norfolk. I'm Oliver Noland, I'm on the MGA committee uh, and help with the uh, experiments. This field is part of the Morley Foundation and I'm here with Ellie Sweetman who is the NIAB forage specialist. We're here to talk about this year's maize trial. Really, how's it going? Really well, on the whole. Um, we've managed to harvest a trial in Kent this year, which has been the first time for a few years we've had a successful trial there, so that's been really good. Um, we also have held all our trials around the country, and that's the NIAB run trials, as well as those run by other trial operators that all come under the maize descriptive list project. Well, that's great. So you've not lost any at all? No. Trials are planted at different times around the country depending on the, the weather mostly, how much sunshine they're going to have, how early uh, farms can get in on over the soil without causing damage to plant the maize. Maize wants to be planted into nice warm soil, ideally 10 degrees plus, um, and it needs as long a growing window as we can have, as much sunshine as possible, and that's going to vary depending on where you are around the country. So um, the Kent trial and the Norfolk trial, for example, were planted in quite early April, whereas up in North Yorkshire, that was in May. So you change the varieties according to the site? Yes, so there are some varieties that will grow well um, earlier in the season, get, get ahead. Um, other ones really need good warm soils um, and will be a little bit slower to mature. So when the varieties are ranked in the descriptive list that they are ranked on the um, tonnage that can be achieved um, but also on the maturity so the dry matter if you plant later you've got a narrower window for that crop to get as much as growth as it can yeah. um, and to be mature enough to harvest into an edible or um, valuable nutritive feedstuff so Earlier maturing varieties are better to plant where you may lose time in the autumn, you aren't going to be able to harvest it too late. Um, later maturing varieties tend to be where you've got the best, most favourable growing conditions. Right, and the possibility of harvesting just a little bit later, but not too late. Yeah. A lot of people didn't manage to harvest their commercial crops when they wanted to last mm -hmm. autumn, yeah. um, and that led to some people not even harvesting till winter and January even, yeah. um, there were a couple of our trials that just couldn't be harvested because the requirement is that whilst you have different maturing varieties even when within the group that you have in a trial, you need the trial's average dry matter percentage to be between 28 and 35 percent. Right. So any higher than 35 percent in practical farming terms it won't ensile properly. It's important that the trials reflect what needs to happen in reality as much as possible while still providing a trial situation where you're trying to minimise those variables and the differences between those varieties. So we're treating all the varieties exactly the same and that is a priority. So you've got randomised uh, trials, you've got three reps, so we get, and we've got trials located all around the country um, so that you get the best overall view that we can get um, the most useful data to then share with growers to, to help them decide which variety is going to be most appropriate for their own growing conditions. Yeah, very good. I, I must say that actually some of the commercial uh, crops that didn't get harvested uh, for forage last year actually were harvested by combine and I think people were quite surprised at how much they managed to rescue in terms of yield by just taking just stripping the cobs off. So yeah. um, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's not a difficult crop to grow but it, it's it's not as uh, hard as some people think it is and yeah. it, it has some very good points going for it doesn't it i was reading the 2020 NIAB booklet the other day and you mentioned that you were working on um lodging the bspb british society of plant breeders have a crop group that help to ensure that this program is fit for purpose and um, as part of that they decided last year that we needed more lodging data. So in 2018 we had quite a lot of lodging but we were only at that point or up to that point over the years recording plots as having lodging once they had 5% or more lodged plants and that's defined as a plant leaning more than 30 degrees. 
and that also needs to be close to harvest so it's actual lodging that won't stand up again because sometimes if you have early summer lodging plants go down with a, a storm event for example they can then stand themselves back up again but it's about the practicality of a harvester being able to get in and, 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 and lift those plants um, without them all being on the ground and, and going mouldy and that sort of thing yeah. um, or being or too tangled up so because we had quite a lot of lodging in, in 2018 it was difficult to be able to be certain that all the varieties were getting a lodging score because there were some that were clearly more susceptible than others but because we only started recording it at a 5% lodging above then there may have been quite a few at two, three, four percent that is now more significant than it would have been considered before when lodging wasn't as right. regular an issue. The we, harvester only takes the middle two rows of a four row plot uh, and I suppose the other risk with lodging is the domino effect. Yeah. In the uh, trial setup, as you say, we har harvest the two centre rows. Either side you have a guard row to try and prevent any crossover or, or effects from one variety plot to the next. Yeah, and they also take a, uh, a representative sample of the crop as the harvester moves through the crop. So the chances of getting a, uh, a proportion of cob, stem and leaf are very high uh, and very accurate. And then, as I understand it, the, the, the um, the dry matter is taken and then they are oven dried before they are go for the final analysis and that's important as well because um, the NIR machines are notoriously uh, difficult to calibrate and I, I think that um, the care that uh, NIAB take with everything is, is, is why the MGA are so pleased to be working with them uh, and because they are also independent as well. They've, they've got nobody on their back uh, except you growers. They're working for you. The trials programme is funded by the breeders through the BSPB. Um, so they take a watchful eye of us as well, and rightly so. Um, the samples that are taken during harvesting the, the plots are, are um, as, you, as you say, they're dried. Um, to get the dry matter. We do take the NIRS dry matter as well, but it's until we can be, as you say, completely confident in the calibrations that, that can vary. Um, so we use the oven dry matter samples that they then get sent off to be milled down into fine enough particles to then be analysed um, in a laboratory setting at NIAB um, to measure the digestibility, so cell wall digestibility, starch, um, and metabolizable energy. Is there any way we can assess drought risk, Ellie? It's quite a complicated issue really because um, the yield of, of the, the crop and the quality doesn't just relate to how much water there is um, and certainly in the very hot season of 2018 it was as much the heat, the excessive heat that was an issue rather than necessarily just the drought. And of course that then depends on soil conditions um, and how well water infiltrates the soil and wicks up through the soil. So it's something that we wouldn't necessarily be able to pin down to just being a varietal issue. Although there is work that we can do over coming years if that's something that where we can start to see there is some causal effect um, that we can work with. Great. Well that sounds, that sounds worth pursuing. What about um, the early vigour scores? Are they any use? Yes, uh, the early vigour scores that assess how well a plot, each plot uh, has germinated and established, that's used by the breeders that submit the varieties into these trials along with the uh, population scores to suggest how well that variety is doing and it is an opportunity for them to establish whether there might be a seed issue if they have a particular variety that's not doing so well. So in, as well as having the descriptive list trials here, we also at a number of sites have the national list trials and that's for new varieties coming onto the market. Um, and there's often a testing ground really for breeders just to see how well it performs in different, different climates. So um, that will be more so where they might 
remove varieties from those trials because the seed lot maybe wasn't ideal. Right. Um, but generally it's a reassurance for the breeders that the varieties had a good enough chance so that the resulting yield and quality will be fair compared to the other varieties on the list. Does this mean that seed, some companies are now seed uh, treating with biostimulants in this trial and some aren't? The descriptive list trials are all just treated with a fungicide to help prevent any issues when the seed is put in the ground. Right, okay, so they've all had the same fungicide yep. treatment. Yeah, there are some other trials on this site where we're looking at with MGA uh, different populations in this sort of soil type in these conditions and how that might affect yield, yeah. um, as well as other MGA trials that are looking at some of those areas. Yeah, and we should say that the uh, plant population trial is at the top end of the site and looks pretty good as well. So we've got um, erect and prostrate um, varieties early and late um, and we will see see what happens. I think it's an interesting thing to pursue. Uh, I think on this site you may find the higher populations work well because there's plenty of body in the soil but we always worry in Norfolk that uh, drought is going to be an issue and, and actually you have to uh, grow the crop as, as cheaply as possible. Yeah. This is the second year of a population trial here in Norfolk and we've also got one in Kent this year for the first time so right. we're accumulating more data yeah. in order to make the uh, information that comes out of it more useful. We also have here John Myhill who is uh, joining the MGA as an agronomist to work along our esteemed Simon Draper. Um, I'm sure it'll be a good partnership Thank and you, welcome John. Uh, it's great to have you on board and um, I think I'd just like to ask you a, um, a little bit about the MGA trials that we've got, got so here. As part of the MGA we want to be challenging how we grow maize in the country um, and the way we do that is with the council members and advice from the wider farming uh, members is to put together a trial package which may look at um, nitrogen yeah. or biostimulants. So in this field in particular we have the nitrogen response curve so that's taking uh, maize growing with zero nitrogen right up to 200 kilograms a hectare. We have a biostimulants trial and along with nitrogen formulation we are mixing biostimulants in with that as well just to see if there's any interaction in the way that we can reduce phosphate, potash or nitrogen input and substitute that with biostimulants. I think it's quite interesting and the plots that have had no placement fertiliser and just biostimulants they look all right don't they? Indeed there does look like there is an interaction with what's happening in the soil biology and availability of phosphate so um, hopefully once we get some data from the trials which is then released at the uh, the conference the winter conference of the MJ that uh, there'll be further discussions yeah. to be had. Yeah we have to say that this trial has been re uh, repeated at other sites hasn't it as well? Yes it has yep so there's two further sites across the country to try and represent different soil types and climate so that we can get a fair assessment of the products. Yeah it, it's it's going to be difficult to get uh, good results out of here but hopefully we'll, we'll make it. Um, it's made a surprising recovery from a, a from a difficult start but that's the, down the other end of the field and uh, there was some some variability there but it, it does seem now it's all looking uh, very green. There's a bit of gap in us but uh, hopefully um, the, the team can work out which plots to uh, to exclude and, 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 and which plots to look after because I think it, it's you know it's really important to be in, in intelligent about uh, trying to get a statistically valid answer which is is not easy with maize is it? No but that is obviously the most important thing for a trial to make sure yeah. statistically it, it can be shown that there is a response and as you say maize is very good at compensating for itself in in years had like this year of challenging conditions yeah and th and this site is quite well heavier than we've been on for a few years and it does seem to have enough basic fertility to uh, actually produce a a good maize crop with a very very low inputs and you know if we can reduce the amount of phosphate uh, and some of these biostimulants can uh, go and get the phosphate from the phosphate in the soil that's not easily measured then you know that could be a very good thing for the environment. Well that's right and as if we can maintain the yield as well as reducing inputs it's, it's, it's a win-win for like you say the environment but also the farmers costs yeah. are reduced as well. Yeah. 
Do you think that the, um, you know, one of the reasons why the Americans seem to be going down a, a, a low level of fertilizer, liquid fertilizer planted with the seed, uh, is the reason why they're doing it? Just to ensure that we set a good potential for the crop? I think there's, there is some merit to trying to feed the maize crop early, get the roots established um, as quick as possible. And we know that by sort of four to six leaves that the, the potential for that crop has been set. So what we want to do is try to minimize any stress and maximize the potential it has. Yeah, Simon's always been very hot on getting your herbicide on before that time, isn't it? Because you can see a lot of damage that happens afterwards.